Haney. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, Mr. Drucker. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was a good show. It was funny. You know, the good old shows back in the day. So, Pikeville and about set for baseball. And then it'll be Zach Lucas with those 10 gaudy home runs and 41 RBIs, a shortstop for Butler. And he'll face, uh, really, as uh, talking to their coach, I tell you what, uh, Coach Brady really uh, proud of what this young man's been able to do as a junior on the mound this year for the Pikeville Pink. Just kind of laughed at that because yeah. I said, if he's 5'11", then I must be about four foot tall. Well, they probably did that at the beginning of the year. And, you know, he's uh, 16, 17 years old. Four right now, and a big right-hander, but he's had an outstanding year. Won a game here to move him to 9-2, and two, 61 innings before. Cecil, 9-2 record for Pikeville. Here is the first pitch of this semifinal game, and it's going to be a call strike on the inside corner. Yeah, the man can really hit the baseball. Three balls and one strike to Lucas, 418 shortstop. Here's the ball, high fly, pop up toward the uh, short center field. Center fielder will call the uh, ferry for it, and he'll make the grab in short. You know, the first pitch fastball, four striker, first pitch breaking ball. It's good to see these guys start the hitters off with a strike. 0-1, and it's uh, chopped uh, out in front of the plate, and the catcher's going to pick it up and fire to first to get him on a close play, but a good play by Ratliff. Second time we've seen that brings up Dwight Bigby, the left fielder for Butler, facing Lane Cecil, the right-hander. He winds and pitches, and here's another chopper toward the shortstop Miller. He fires high, and Hamilton there with the high t- uh, grab at first base and keeps the foot down. Good play by Hamilton, the eighth grader. He can do it on the mound. He can do it at first base, Doug. Pretty sl- one to nothing here in the top half of the third inning. Late start tonight, about a 6:30 first pitch. Here's the pitch out, hit down toward third, fielded down there by Keene. He fires over to Hamilton to register the out of Kyle Asher, and Asher wasn't even halfway. I'm watching where their defense is playing. Shortstop is playing about halfway in the dirt because this is a deep-cut field, one that maybe a little bit deeper cut, as we talked about last night, than some of the high school fields. And what they've done now, the shortstop has really cut off a lot of distance, so yes. he's playing almost at double play depth. That curveball caught the outside corner against Saunders. No balls and one strike. Cecil, the 0-1 pitch, and that's going to be a call strike on the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. Way ahead now to Saunders. And uh, Lane Cecil, the uh, pitcher for Pikeville, looking for his first strikeout here against the number nine-hole hitter, Saunders, a 297 hitter, though. You know, we talked about some of these nine-hole hitters. There's the 0-2 pitch to Saunders, ball high. And these nine-hole hitters, uh, like you know, you go back to Will Kindred at uh, LCA and guys like that, they're not your typical nine-hole hitters. Well, this kid looks like an athlete. We said the other day that he had a little trouble, struck out a couple of times, but he looks like an athlete when he walks to the dish. Here's the one-two pitch, and he fouls that one behind home plate off to the right. Two outs here in the third. Jesse let off. He grounded out to Miller at short. Asher hit a uh, sharp uh, grounder down to Keene at third, and as Doug Flint said, he didn't hesitate at all, firing that over to the eighth grader, Hamilton, who showed the uh, – the uh, flash over there and the panache, if you will, first base. I like it. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss. He strikes out his first victim tonight as he gets Saunders on a high fastball. And for Butler, no run. We head to the fourth inning. Pikeville leading Butler one to nothing. Gary Ball, Doug Flynn with Richard Farmer, our executive producer. Thanks to Richard for the region that they're coming out of there in Louisville along with Mail, that sixth and seventh region. You know you got a pretty good ball club. Pulled down toward third field by Clark Keene. He sets and fires over to Hamilton and gets the leadoff uh, hitter Schneider over at first base. Bean will be followed by Zach Lucas. Bean now the right-handed hitter. Two balls and no strikes. And there's the breaking pitch a call strike. 75 miles an hour in that ring, but uh, he's around the plate. You know, he's got a big, tall guy. Here's the 1-1, and it's hit down toward short. And Miller plays and fires over the infield to Hamilton for the out. Good play. And here as we head to the top half of this third inning. Cecil takes a long look in at his catcher, Ratliff, the right-hander. The wind and the pitch, and it's pulled down towards short. Backhanded nicely by Miller. Fires high over the infield and to Hamilton. What a play by Miller falling back toward left field. He made an easy play out of that, which was a difficult play. Miller base, so a great yeah. opportunity here for Butler. Yeah, they're actually going to score that, a double and an E8 on the center fielder. So he'll get an error on that because they didn't get the relay throw in. But uh, Bigby was thinking triple all the way. Swinging a miss, strike one. I don't think it would have mattered on the relay throw. Couldn't find anything on him. Three balls and one strike to Asher. Here's the wind, the pitch. Swinging a miss on that. He couldn't catch up to that high pitch. The hit set. Ball was a little bit out of the zone, and uh, he acted as if he was going to try to hit one out of here. Here's the 3 2 pitch, and swinging a miss. Strike him out. Good job there by Cecil with the strikeout of Kyle Asher, the number eight hitter. And then you go to the bottom. 
usually will settle down some of the nerves for some of the guys. Good crowd down the shaded side. These folks are very smart. Squirt bunting it uh, behind home plate. Catcher and makes the grab. He's going to have a double play opportunity. And does he double him up? Yes, Hamilton dropped it and picked it up for the double play. What a play by the catcher. Beam. It's Pikeville. Pikeville, outstanding ball club out of the mountains. And Butler out of Louisville. So you got the big school team, Butler, and the small class A team, Pikeville. That one, that's what makes rank one out. One to nothing ball game, and Beam has just walked. He's down at first, being held on by Jacob Hamilton, the eighth grader. Here's the pitch. Ball hit a flare out over second base, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. So Butler, something brewing here as Lucas got the little flare right over second base. Well, they call it a trying to tie it up here with Beam down at third base, and at the plate is Daniel Pardue, the designated hitter, big left-handed hitter, 362 batting average. He hits it down towards second. And Lane will feel, bobbles it, sets, fires, and throws it. Almost threw it away, but good job of Hamilton to hang on the back and get him out in the run. Hit that there was going to be a bunt that time with Asher. 1-1 one, one ball game, and Cecil has seen the uh, score tied here, and he hits a corner on the outside, call strike. Lane had just a sacrifice bunt and all that stuff. Doesn't seem to have its place like it used to. Center fielder Sa- Damon Saunders up there now. He struck out back into third. And he's got a uh, runner in scoring position now, and he fouls it behind home plate off to our right over here and took a good rip at that. The number nine hole hitter came in nearly hitting 300, 297 batting average. He struck out in the third, and looking at my score sheet here, he's a matter of fact the only strikeout victim so far for Lane Cecil. Yeah, you know, he looks like he's due. He's had a couple of pretty good swings, uh, but he looks like he's due. Smith, the courtesy runner out at second. Here's the pitch to Saunders, and that's going to be a ball high and inside. One ball, one strike to Damon Saunders, the center fielder. Then you go to the top of the order, and Trevor Snyder the, for Butler. One ball, one strike. Butler, one run, uh, three hits. Pike will one run, four hits. Doug Flynn, both teams, a couple of errors. Yeah, it's, it, well, this type game you kind of expected it to right. be, you know, and the uh, that's why the, they're here. But uh, uh, the pitching is, I thought the offense might be a little bit better in this ball game than what we've seen. Ooh, tried to bunt for a base hit. Sure did, and fouled it off the first base side up into the stands. One ball, two strikes now to Saunders. The center fielder struck out in the third 0 for 1. And then, as I said, uh, back to the top after him. You've got the go-ahead run, and uh, Smith out at second base. He's running for Jesse here in this uh Fifth inning. That's a good call right there. you got a hitter that's been struggling at the plate. He's got an opportunity to push the ball towards second for a base hit or drop it down third baseline. And I like that. That's good coaching. One ball, two strikes, and hit chopper pulled foul down toward third. 1-1 one, one ball game, and Butler and Pikeville. And a good one here at the state semifinals. The winner will move on to the state championship tomorrow night, and we know that uh, if – it's Pikeville. They should pull this round. First time they'll ever play in a state championship in baseball. That's correct. First time they've been in the Final Four, according to Coach Brady. One ball, two strikes. He said as long as he can remember, they've never been in the – and he can remember a long way back, I'm sure. Swing and a miss, and good pitch strikes him out. Doubled and reached third on the air, and then he came in to score in the RBI single by Jesse Ryan Smith and running for him now. That ball's fouled out of play off the first base side out for Asher. We probably start closer to 9 o'clock because of the uh, – First pitch in this one was uh, delayed by Butler reaching the ballpark late because of the wreck. Here's a chopper down towards second and fielded down there by Lane, and he flips over to Hamilton for the out, first out, yeah, but allowing uh, the uh, courtesy runner Smith to move down to second base. Good uh, job. 102.3, so several stations picking up the uh, Rawlings Radio Network tonight. Yeah, we're glad, people, if you can't make it to the ball game, we're glad you're listening along. Pop up. up. Pop up toward uh, Miller, the shortstop. He comes in and makes the grab off the bat of Schneider. He pops up to the shortstop, Gavin Miller. At six outs to go, he's trying to get that base runner on there, so he's taken. Now he needs to be a good two-strike hitter. 3-2, and he chops it down toward third. Easy play down there for Keene. He fires low over the infield. Hamilton goes down the eighth grader and pulls it out of lane, and it's ruled an error. So at first is Snyder getting the lead over there for the first time. Now Lane Cecil to the uh, Second battery faces work out of that stretch, and it's trying to bunt it around and got a piece of it. Five. Chris Beam grounds out to the third baseman, Clark King, with one out. That brings up Zach Lucas now. There's a call strike. No balls in one strike. Good breaking pitch there for Butler Bears. Here's a uh, ball hit down to a third, fielded nicely by King. He fires, and Hamilton scoops over at first for the second out. So big beat. Eight to six. Three to two here. Butler on top. 
two outs. Here's the pitch, and it's hit right up toward the middle. Shortstop will field. Gavin Miller, and he fires over to Hamilton to get the run. I might, I might pitch out first pitch. Lane C, so that may be a, a part of the discussion as well from when the uh, Coach Brady came out there. Throw it up. He gets the lead over there first base. Three to two ball game. And here's the call strike on the inside corner. 75 miles an hour, Doug. Here in the seventh inning, 3 2 ball game. Butler leads Pike on the top of the seventh. And here's a ball hit out towards center field. Center fielder coming in on the run. And McDonald makes the grab for the second out here in the seventh inning as he retires Snyder. A ball kind of. Pike will in the maroon with the white. Pike, of course, Pikeville College down there. My nephew Tyler Curtis uh, pitched for them this past season as a freshman. Out of Here's a ball pulled down toward the shortstop, and he fields. Miller fires to the second baseman covering lane to retire the speedy Saunders at second base. So they get the.